Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, video. We are going to develop now the exercises 1 to 6 of chapter 21, The Theory of Consumer Choice. Remember, this is the book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So the first question says, Jennifer divides her income between coffee and croissant, both of which are normal goods. Remember, normal goods are those kind of goods when the price go the price goes up naturally the demand goes down on the other side the if the price goes down naturally the demand will increase when we think about income is provided that when the income increase the demand for normal goods will increase as well then a nearly frost in brazil causes a large increase in the price of coffee in the United States. So first, show the effect of the frost on Jennifer's budget constraint. So here uh, we make first, the, we label the axis quantity of coffee and quantity of croissant. Why uh, I put in that way? It doesn't matter actually. You can put here in the other side, upside down, it doesn't matter. You can put like croissant and coffee and the other side is exactly the same. So here is the body constraint. Remember that these provide the bundles, the, the infinite like quantity of bundles that provide you like the maximum uh, of your income, that you spend all your income available. If you are below, naturally you, you will spend less that you have available. If you go up, you will spend uh, more, so it's not possible. Then, uh, here, imagine the situation that the price of coffee will go up. Why? Because there is a frost, and this is an uh, impact in the supply, a negative impact, that at the end of the day will provide an increase in the price of coffee. If you understand well that, you can go to the the, the, the um, beginning of the first chapters where we make these changes. So then, this is the slope of a budget constraint, Px over Py. So what is Px? This is croissant and P, Py is coffee. Then, if the coffee will increase naturally because if the denominator is, is greater, it means like you have the same pizza but for more people the slope will decrease so then the slope will be uh, it should be at the end of the day flatter then here should be the situation why we change in this one and no in other direction because the coffee you cannot afford the same quantity if you spend all your income available you will spend less and in the croissant is exactly the same because the price doesn't change. So this is the situation of the budget constraint. So naturally, uh, a lot of bundles, they are not more possible to be consumed due to this change. The second question says, show the effect on the frost of the frost on Jennifer's optimal consumption bundle, assuming that the substitution effect outweighs the income effect for croissant. So here we have the same situation, just we start to put the optimal. Here imagine that there is a, a tangency between the indifference curve and the budget constraint. So they are tangent. So then this is the this is the situation Q1 is like the initial quantity of croissant. Why we start to talk about croissant because this is the situation or analyze the F effect uh, for croissant. So then, automatically, this imagine that now this is the um, the situation, the where the slope of the budget constraint is exactly the same as the slope of the indifference curve. So this is the this is the Q1. So at the end of the day, this one, the Q1 minus Q2, is the total effect. As you can see, it's positive. Even though there was an increase in the price of the coffee, 
um, the person starts to consume more quassin than before. So this should be the case because the substitution effect is higher than the income effect. So then if we move the, the body constraint to the first indifference curve, this person will consume this quantity of quassin. Why do we make this change? Basically, this change is made because we need to decompose the total effect in income effect and substitution effect. In order to decompose it, every time we need to move the last body constraint or the final body constraint with the same slope, provide like an imaginary income in order to achieve the first or the initial indifference curve. Why? Because we make this person as happy as before and this will, will provide us the substitution effect. So then the Q2 minus uh, Q0 is the substitution effect. So this person will change this quantity of quassin for uh, the change. But this is not just the case because there is an income effect behind the change of the price of the coffee. Because not only because the price of coffee is higher, you will consume more croissant. Unfortunately, you will still consume some of coffee. So then you are poorer. So for this reason, you will be, uh, you, there will be a change as well in the income effect. And then this change from Q2 to Q1 is the income effect. So in this case, we see how the substitution effect is higher than the income effect. So at the end of the day, for this reason, you consume more than the initial situation. Show the effect of the Frost Jennifer optimal consumption bundle, assuming that the income effect outweighs the substitution effect for Quasan. It's exactly the same situation. Uh, just here I provide the situation of coffee, but that's a matter. So here as the bundle is just select this one. It was the, um, the Q0 for this should be, let me do something. So here should be the situation Q0 for, for Quasan, right? And this one uh, should be the other one that we make this one in the previous one, Q1. So then this one should be like can of here. So this is the situation and this is the bundle uh, for the consumer bundle regarding the situation that before. Actually, in order to understand better, just have the situation uh, before that it was the, the they were like depicted well. So here is the situation. This was the, the first one, Q0, and the new bundle should be Q1. And this should be the quantity of coffee. And this one should be uh, the quantity of coffee initial one. So this should be the initial and this should be the final one because the other one maybe was not like really clear. So then the next question says that uh, compare the following two pairs of goods. So we have co Coke and Pepsi, it's keys and it's key bindings. And A, in which cases are the two goods complements? In which case are the substitutes? So here we know that Coke uh, and Pepsi, they are substitutes. And here we have one, one. Remember when there is a slope like that is because your preference for all those goods are exactly the same. You are able or you are willing to change or to exchange one by one. So here is another indifference uh, curve, two by two and three by three. So substitutes, what you can replace or you can take the same advantage for one good, just consuming to the other one, even without consuming this other good. So this is constant slope. So we have the change of Y over the, one, the change of, uh, of X. So the Coca-Cola Pepsi is exactly, is exactly the same. This is slope in the difference curve. Then sky bindings is they are just like supports 
that you need uh, mandatory when you you need to use these keys as well. So then the they are complements because you need the consumption of, of one as the consumption of the other one. You cannot consume just one because these mm, these will not provide a uh, like satisfaction. So they are like perfect complements. So for this reason, it's like one by one the optimal. You can have like a lot of skis, but if you don't have more bindings, they don't worth at all. And the same situation here with the um, with for example this one. Imagine that you have ten skis, but you just have one of ski bindings, so they won't worth. So for this reason, this is the shape of that of that curve, and this is the relationship. So this is a 90 uh, degrees angle for this indifference curve. B. In which case do you expect the indifference curves to be fairly straight? In which case you do you expect the indifference curves to be very bowed? So here is the situation: very straight. You have this one right cause is low as we saw and this one uh, when it's very bowed is because you can make a change a combination of that and when you have a lot of this uh, a lot of this good you actually you are able to uh, change a lot of quantities of pizza just for getting a little bit of Pepsi because you are satisfied in terms of food but not in terms of liquid, so you are able to change a lot of pizza just for a little bit of Pepsi. So that that should be uh, the situation. And this is exactly the same. You are able to change a lot of Pepsi just for getting a little bit of pizza. So this is the situation when you can change them. And the extreme cases are the complements that you need to consume one by one. But when they are very bowed, it's because you prefer a medium, like the medium points. Then, the other situation, uh, C, the other question. In which case will the consumer respond more to a change in the relative price of the two goods? So here is the situation of um, perfect substitutes with con constant slope. This is the indifference curve. And imagine that this is your budget constraint. Imagine that there is an increase in Pepsi, so then you will consume for example here uh, you will example consume consume here in that part so as you can see here maybe this one is not the consumption right because maybe this should be not the maximum the 3 3 cannot be the maximum one so here should be another indifference curve that will maximize right and then maybe when there is an increase of that maybe you will still consume Pepsi here because there is another indifference curve here but imagine that there is another another increase so here should be like something like that the point here is that you can change from here all in Pepsi now you will consume all in Coke so then, if we can think in that way, then we will consume or we change from all in one good to all in another good if just the change of the relative price occur. Maybe we can think in that way. So then, in the quantity of Pepsi of pizza, then this is the situation when there is, uh, this is the bundle, and when there is a change, maybe there is not like really an important change because those two goods you exchange between them but with the substitutes this should be the case that maybe just a little change will make a drastic change from one good to another one so then maybe we can think in that way that the consumer respond more to a change in relative price in the substitution and I just realized this one because before I arrived to another conclusion but I would say that this should be more uh, more accurate then 
Three, you can see more soda and pizza. You consume only soda and pizza. One day, the price of soda goes up and the price of pizza goes down. And you're just as happy as you were before the price changes. Illustrate this situation on a graph. So first, there is an increase uh, in, the, in the price of soda and there is a decrease in the price of pizza. So here is the slope. Here is an increase in the pizza in the numerator and a decrease in the denominator, right? Oh, actually, it should be it should be better in that way. Maybe I did wrong. The pizza go down, right? So maybe I would say this one go down, right? And the soda goes up. So what happened at the end of the day? Remember, if we just take this one, it's more people uh, or more the same pizza with more people. So the denominator goes up, so then natural this will decrease. And if the numerator decreases as well, so all these naturally should decrease, right? It should be the case. All that should decrease. Then at the end of the day it got it got flatter, right? Then this was the situation soda and pizza. We have this budget constraint and then it gets in that way. Why? First, because the soda price will go up, you cannot consume the same quantities as before. So there should be fewer quantities. On the other side, the pizza will go down the price, so then you can consume more. So for this reason, this budget constraint get flatter. Then, imagine the situ first situation. You consume this, uh, sorry, this bundle, right? And now you consume that. So as you can see, you still are in the same indifference curve. So for this reason, you are as happy as you were before as the price changes because it's like kind of compensation. Even there is an increase in the price of soda, this is kind of compensated in the decrease of the price of pizza. So B, how does your consumption of the two goods change? How does your response depend on income and substitution effects? So here is the situation that we have represented, right? Here, remember, this is not okay, this one, because at the end of the day, this one go down, it got flutter, and then you have this one. So the income effect. You are richer, why? Because of the, of the price of peaks effect, because it decreases, so you are richer, between quotation marks, but you are poorer, poorer, because the price of uh, of soda will go up, so that you cannot consume more. So at the end of the day, the income effect is zero because you are still the same. But there is a substitution effect naturally. Due to the, the fall of pizza, you will con you consume more. Sorry, increase with s. Will consume more in pizza, and you will consume less of uh, soda, few, few sodas, right? So then, this is the replaced consumption. So at the end of the day, the substitution effect is exactly equal as the total effect. Then, can you afford the bundle of soda and pizza you consume before the price changes? Well, as we represented here, should be not possible because you were in A and now B and A is out of the budget constraint. So you cannot consume the same bundle as before. But imagine that they are perfect substitute, which is, doesn't make too much sense. But if we have that situation, and this was the indifference curve, maybe we can achieve the same bundle. But as rational or as common, we are representing them as normal goods that they are not uh, perfect substitutes. They are, um, uh, sorry, a perfect um, here complements. Sorry, this is not substitute complements. Obviously, um, this doesn't make um, too much too much sense because maybe you eat more. This not they not they don't work like perfect 
as complements. But if you can imagine like that, it should be the case that you can achieve the same bundle. Mario consumes only cheese and quackers. Could cheese and quackers both be inferior goods for Mario? Explain. So here, when we have quantity of quackers and quantity of cheese, and here is the maximum of, of the maximum consumption for Mario, imagine that the income increases. So as you can see, you should consume less of two goods because this is the definition of inferior goods that when the income increases the consumption will be less uh, obviously we are just assuming these two goods so this is impossible at least one of them should be normal to make that representation b suppose that cheese is a normal good for mario while crackers are an inferior good if the price of cheese falls what happens to Mario's consumption of crackers? What happens to his consumption of cheese? Explain. So this is the initial situation. We have here in y-axis quantity of cheese and the x-axis quantity of crackers. So here is the budget constraint. This is the initial bundle of maximization where the slope of the indifference curve is exactly the same as the slope of the budget constraint. Imagine that the price of cheese will go down. Then automatically your um, budget constraint it gets like steeper because you, you will not consume this point but you can consume that. So this is the new consumption. Here as you can see the substitution effect you consume more cheese fewer crackers because relatively crackers are more expensive right so this is the situation and income effect you're richer but crackers are an inferior good so you consume less so both effects make that you at the end of the day consume less crackers so both effects are negative in crackers because because of substitution effect you prefer cheese because this is uh, cheaper than before and the other one in the income effect you are richer because you can consume or you can achieve higher uh, uh, higher quantities of, of cheese then five Jim buys only milk and cookies in year one Jim earns one hundred dollars milk costs two dollar per quart and cookies cost four per dozen draw Jim's body constraint so the income is 100 the price of milk is 2 and the price of cookies are 4 so then here we have the representation we are going to put here uh, cookies in the x axis and milk in the y axis first imagine that we consume all in milk this immediately bring that your income over the price of milk will provide the maximum quantities that you can consume in milk if you spend all your income available in that good so it should be 100 over 2 so then it should be 50 now imagine that you consume all in cookies if you consume all in cookies should be the income over price of cookies so 100 over 4 this will be you this will provide us 24 25 sorry so then when you join those point, two points this will bring the body constraint why we just need up two pair of points because the slope is constant and is enough to have two points of a uh, line to get the complete line so then this is the budget constraint now suppose that all prices increase by 10 percent in year two and that Jim's salary increases by 10 percent as well draw Jim's new budget constraint how would Jim's optimal combination of milk and cookies in year two compare with to his optimal combination in year one so this one was the initial situation now imagine that the price of milk increases 10 percent so every time you need to increase just you need to multiply 1.1 1 
if you need 20 you will multiply by 1 time 1.2 so on so forth so you will have 2 times 1.1 this will bring 2.2 then the price of milk in year 2 labeled as milk 2 should be 2.2 the price of of C, which is cookies, times uh, or increase 10%, it works exactly, exactly the same, so 4 times 1.1, so it should be price of cookies 4.24, 4, sorry, then the increase of the income, exactly the same, 10%, so it should be 110, so before going to the budget constraint, you can infer that, come on, if the prices increases in the same proportion as my income increases, I will be exactly the same. So the budget constraint shouldn't change. So let's see. So imagine all consumption in milk should be income over price of milk, 110 over 2.2, this will bring 50. All consumption in cookies, this will bring 110 over 4.4, should, should be 25. So it's exactly the same as situation as year one. So there are no real changes. So for this reason, workers uh, fight a lot. If the prices go to 2%, automatically the, the salary, the wages should increase high, higher than this percent because otherwise the situation will be exactly the same. Six, state whether each of the following statements is true or false. Explain your answers. First, all given goods are inferior goods. Remember, they have income effect negative. So then, a fall in income uh, increases the demand. So, Remember, the price goes up, you are poorer, so you are willing to pay more. So this fulfills the situation of income effect negative. However, all the inferior goods are giving goods. If the price goes up, you can consume better other goods. So they are not giving goods because the price goes up of butter, for example, you start to consume maybe another or, or lower quantity of this good. Be, this is because the substitution effect is higher of the income effect. So for this reason um, for this reason you, the inferior goods they are not giving goods, right? Because if the price goes up you, know, you don't consume like more. And in the other situation the income effect is higher than the substitution effect. So for this reason there is no other substitute that I can consume this is unique painting so for this reason they consume that good okay so that's not a case that all very good are giving goods okay I hope you have enjoyed this video you have understood sorry for the mistakes that you have seen I hope you have get or grasp the idea as usual you can comment and this is like my personal point of view maybe I'm wrong but if you have another ideas or another part, we can discuss. So if you like it, you can subscribe to my channel and you can visit to our website. Have a great, great day or night. Bye-bye.